everyone. So we both have engineering backgrounds. We love to tinker with code. We think that software engineering is one of the best things out there. So it won't surprise you to learn that we both work as... Product managers. <laughs> yes, that is right. We spend absolutely none of our working time in a development environment at all, and we absolutely love it. So. How did we get here? A little bit of context here. We both studied technical degrees at uni and now we both work as product managers at a tech company in Sydney. I studied mechatronic engineering and computer science and- I studied software engineering. We find that product management is still a relatively unknown, unsung career path for other young people. And it's not really spoken about as a valid alternative path for people that did study something along the lines of software engineering or computer science. Yeah, even within the tech industry, we find this role can be massively misunderstood. We still work with people who confuse us with project managers. <laughs> we also speak to a lot of young people early in their careers who are really interested in a lot of the things that product management involves, but aren't really aware of it as a career path. And we wanna make sure that people have access to that information. So if it's something that you could be interested in, it's something you have an opportunity to pursue. So we're going to cover a few things. We're gonna cover one, what PM is, two, how we became interested in it, three, how we transitioned into PM, four, some of the main differences we found between engineering and product management as jobs, and then five, how a technical background has helped us as product managers. Let's get into it. So first things first, what actually is product management? We have a ton of resources that we'll link in the description below, so definitely go check those out. But at a very high level, Engineers' job are to build solutions or build products for users. Designers' jobs are to figure out what those solutions, what those products should look like and feel like and how a user's gonna interact with them. A product manager's job is really the why. What is it that we should be building in the first place and why should we be building that? They sit at the intersection of business and design and engineering and are trying to understand what are the right problems for us to be solving for our business and the right problems for us to be solving for our users. So your job basically as a product manager is to make the right things happen. That sounds great at a high level, but what could this actually look like day to day? Well, some of the tasks that we found ourselves doing include interviewing customers and synthesizing their feedback, curating a product roadmap, competitor and market research, long-term strategic planning, creating and pitching a product vision, motivating and inspiring a team, lots of stakeholder management, prioritizing features for an engineering team to build next, creating new products and bringing them to market, and working with sales and marketing to define go-to-market strategies. So that's a funny mix. Again, it's a really, really specific thing that you're trying to do, create the right outcome, and it's a lot of different types of work that you end up doing to get there. So as two engineering students, how did we get here? So now that we know what PM is, we thought it would be interesting to kind of talk through how we found out about it and how we ended up pursuing it. To start with, we thought we would share a little bit about our backgrounds. So I went into university studying design in architecture because I was really interested in how design could help improve people's lives, basically. I switched into software engineering firstly because I was doing a subject in it and I really, really enjoyed the programming. But secondly, because software has such a powerful ability to reach so many different people. I then, whilst I was studying, went and did some work as a software engineer for a consulting company where we would go and work with companies to sort of solve very specific problems. I was building uh, some, some e-commerce solutions. So for me, I started uni in a mechatronic engineering degree. I chose engineering because I was really passionate about making an impact for people, I think sort of similar to you. Um, and I really liked maths, really liked science, knew that I kind of wanted to be in the sort of STEM space because I was really convinced that that was a great vehicle for impact. I did some programming as part of my mechatronic engineering degree and I liked the coding part a lot more than like the hardware subjects and the mechanical subjects that we had to do. So then I also picked up a computer science degree and ended up graduating with both the mechatronic engineering and the computer science degrees. Both very technical backgrounds. So why product management? Well, for us, I think it really came down to the kinds of problems that we like to solve. Although we loved our technical courses and we did well in them, we found that the problems that we really like to solve were the super tangible human-centric ones a little bit more than the purely technical ones. When I was working as a software engineer, I found the writing code to be the boring thing I did between all of the actual things that I wanted to be doing, which was talking to users and thinking about long-term strategy and doing all those sorts of things, which are really a very different type of problem. They're much more person-centric as opposed to kind of systems or computer-centric. Yeah, I think, you know, now that we work with a lot of amazing engineers and we've had the chance to observe them, I think really great engineers have this quality where they really 
like froth a good elegant technical solution <laughs> and like for them coming up with that elegant technical solution is the meaty rewarding problem whereas for us we did not relate to that at all <laughs> we didn't care if the solution was particularly elegant or technical we didn't care if it was like the hackiest solution ever or even a completely non-technical solution for us the really rewarding important thing was seeing that tangible impact and solving a problem for somebody yeah it's interesting if you think about any kind of software solution. You have the spectrum of problems all the way from the, how does this thing interact with society? How does it affect people? How does it interact with businesses and strategy and all of these different things? And then all the way at the other end is the real nitty gritty of how do we build this? What's the most performance solution? What's the most elegant way of making this work and making it extensible and all of these different things. And we found ourselves really wanting to work on those. We would call them sort of more big picture problems of how does this interface with society as opposed to how do we build this thing? In our experience, this seems to be a common thread amongst a lot of PMs, a real hunger to solve those human centric problems and to think about those you know, business needs and business strategy. Often it's expressed in things like an interest in entrepreneurship and that sort of thing. So how did we actually find out about product management? Well, whilst we were doing our technical degrees, we had a lot of engagement with different parts of the software engineering world. And one of those engagements for me, for example, was working at this company. And as I said, I really enjoyed the parts that were to do with people and strategy and all of these different things and ended up having a lot of conversations about that. And through that, I had somebody say to me, hey, have you heard about this thing called product management? And I had absolutely no idea what it was. So the two of us sort of investigated a little bit more, um, did some reading online, found the few resources that were available on it. And that's sort of what our introduction to it was. We realized we were sort of doing a lot of those things already in sort of various projects and that sort of thing, but it gave a word to the best parts of the things that we loved about the work that we did. So we mentioned before that as product managers, we spend a lot of time working with engineers and we've also spent our fair share of time writing our own programs. So what are the main differences between the kinds of work that we found you do as an engineer versus the kinds of work you do as a PM? The type of work that PMs and engineers do is often very different. We'll go through four of the differences that we've noticed really quickly. The first one is that product managers work with unbounded work. So we talked before about getting the right outcome. The task of figuring out what the right outcome is, is essentially limitless. So as PMs, you never get uh, like an engineer might a ticket of work that's really well defined and you know you're done when you finish that and you, you, know, you pass your pull requests and all of the testing works and all of that sort of thing. It's very unbounded for PM. The second difference, which we sort of touched on before, is if you think about that stack of problems, all the way from the why and the big picture of how things interact with society, all the way down to the how. Now, as PMs, you spend a lot of time thinking about the why and the what. What's the change you wanna see in the world and what's the thing that you can build to make that happen? Whereas as engineers, you do some work obviously on that what, and then it's really about the how. How do we make that thing happen? A third difference is in how our calendars look and how we spend our time. PMs will make a lot of jokes about the amount of meetings that they're in, and that's pretty representative of reality. So we have a lot of disparate tasks, working with a lot of different people, and so we'll often find ourselves doing six or seven totally different things, even within a single day. Whereas for engineers, you might do three or four things. It's mainly writing your code, and then there might be team meetings and a few other things like that. But it's much more sort of a smaller set of things that you have more time to go deeply into. And the final kind of high level difference that we've found is success is measured very, very differently. Success for a PM can only really be measured over like a one year plus time scale because you need to see all the way from the, you know, the problems that you chose to solve and those priorities that you set all the way through to how you executed that and then the impact that it has on users. That cycle can take, as I say, a year or longer. Whereas for an engineer, you can really track success and you can feel a lot of success based on how many you know, problems you solve in the code, how many tickets that you complete, those sorts of things, which are much more tangible and sort of much more local. So as PMs, we have to be very used to the idea that even if we do a fantastic job, it might take us a while to really know that we've done a fantastic job. Lastly, we wanted to talk about how we feel having a technical background has helped us as PMs. Whilst you can obviously be a fantastic product manager without having a technical background, in fact, some of the best PMs we know don't have technical backgrounds, there are a number of advantages that we've found to having one. Fundamentally, having a technical background means that you are able to better understand the technology that you work with. The most important way that we've found this manifest 
is the fact that you are able to speak the same language as your engineers. So when they tell you that something is going to take, you know, six weeks longer to build or, you know, one technical implementation has more advantages than another technical implementation, they're using language that you fundamentally understand and you're able to kind of bridge that gap with them. This means a number of things. Firstly, it means that you can build trust with your engineering team because they, you know, they feel like they're in good hands. They feel like you understand the sort of stuff that they're saying to you. The second is that you're able to better interrogate and understand um, engineering delivery estimates and timelines. So, you know, if your engineering team comes to you and says, we think that this feature is going to take this much effort, which means this many weeks, you're able to kind of uh, dig into that and ask, you know, the right questions about why, what sort of technical implementation have they considered, where are the complexities, that sort of thing. This basically helps you help your team understand where the important trade-offs might be. It also can give you a kind of instinctive feeling about how long different things might take to build, which is a really good starting point before you actually take them to your engineering team so that they can do the hard work of actually figuring out how long it'll take to build. It also means that you'll probably have a deeper understanding and therefore be able to better mitigate product challenges that arise from technology challenges. So things like performance or scaling. Yeah, I think that last one is really important. As product managers, we can sometimes feel like we're a little bit far away from some of those fundamental technical challenges. But at the end of the day, for a lot of different pieces of software, those are like the most important things. So if you can at least speak the language and understand why scale and performance might be important and what scale and performance actually mean, it can really help you drive the right outcomes. One thing that it's really important to understand, and this is actually advice that I got from an interviewer from my current role, who was also an ex-engineer, was that make sure as a PM that you understand it's not your job to have final say on how engineering does engineering at all. It's super important that you're empowering your team with the context they need to go and make the great decisions that they are going to make. And if you are trying to sort of micromanage that by trying to have that final say, you're overstepping the bounds of your role and you're stopping your team being as effective as they can be. So this is something that technical PMs can sometimes struggle with because they're so used to being in the code that they kind of default to wanting to go back there. Fundamentally, product management is a super exciting, super, super high impact career path. And we really want more people, particularly technical people, to know about it and consider it as a career option. The other great thing about PM is that it's a role that's getting more and more visibility and more and more companies are hiring for it. And I think that product managers are probably working on problems that cover almost any single industry on the planet. So whatever problem it is that you really care about, going into PM means that you have a really great chance of making a good dent on that problem space. So that's it for this video. Um, there's obviously plenty more on this topic that we could talk about. This video was actually inspired by a piece that I wrote a couple of months ago on my journey into product management as an engineering student. So if you're interested in a little bit more detail, including some of the details on what a product management career path can actually look like and what companies are looking for in early stage career product managers, I will link that in the description below. This video, like most of the videos we make about product management arose because these are the sorts of questions that we get asked all the time about our roles. And to help anybody who is potentially interested in product management as a career path, we've actually put together a page that has all of the different resources that we've created and some of our favorites from other people as well. So you can have all the information that you might need about what it's like to pursue product management and how you might do that. It's a constantly evolving page. We'll link it in the description below and we hope that you find it really, really helpful. We've even included some things like some of our favorite books on helping to prepare for product management interviews. And as always, if you found this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.